What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? We're going to wait until we get a few more people inside of this, uh, inside the chat. A few more people inside of this, uh, all right. We got eight people. All right. What's going on, y'all? What's going on? Make sure y'all hitting that like button as y'all come into the chat. Make sure y'all hitting that like button. How y'all doing? Man, the dog is going crazy. What's going on, bro? Mr. Pooh? What's going on, Chicago RC? What's happening? How you doing? Just living Ohio life? That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I stay in the hobby because I got too many, too much time. My girl will find stuff for me to do. <laughs> you know, that, 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 that happens, I guess. That happens, I guess. You know, uh, but how do you, how do you, how do you not get bored though? You know, a lot of people that ask me, man, how do you stay, uh, how do you stay motivated? You know, um, I'm getting bored of this tank. I'm getting bored of this fish. I'm thinking about quitting the hobby. They, they question how they keep going. You know what I mean? And I always give them my advice. But, you know, I thought this would be a good little topic, you know, for the viewers, the spectators. And then just, you know, so we could bounce ideas off one another. You know, I, the last thing I want is someone to keep fish for some years and all of a sudden like, man, eh, I'm tired of this shit. I don't want to keep fish anymore. So if I could provide anybody with some kind of tips. You know, so when that time does come, you know, they know how to adjust and keep it going. So, you know. Oh, yeah, work, bro. Yeah, work, Mr. Pooh. I hear you. Oh, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it, man. You know, um, it's all right if you missed the last live. We're going to do this more often. You know what I mean? So you catch them when you catch them. I definitely appreciate the support. Hey, y'all, we got 11 people in the room. We got four likes. I know we could get seven more added to it. All right. I stay in the hobby because I got too much time. My girl will find stuff for me to do. I work like always. Chicago, seeing a tank do well for me. I work two jobs, and it's rough for maintenance. But the thing that keeps me going is seeing a tank doing well. It's the reward of it. I agree with you, Chicago. I agree with that 100%. You know, I say it all the time, you know, keeping fish is almost like living art. You know what I mean? You 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 take your pee, you take your empty canvas, you put the paints on there, you put it on the wall and you get to just watch it. You know what I mean? So it's like, you know, all your hard work is paying off when you see the fish interacting, the fish healthy, things like that. Make sure y'all like it. Make sure y'all liking the video as y'all come into the chat. We got 14 people in the room. We got five likes. I know we can get 14 likes. Y'all just spectating. There we go, six. Come on now. Eight more people. Y'all just chilling. Garcia, what's going on, Bertho? How you doing? I'm doing pretty good, man. I, uh, I finally got the grass cut. Feeling good about that. Um, cleaned the koi pond yesterday. I'm excelled about I'm, I'm sorry. I'm elated about that because that was long overdue. Got the African cichlid tank clean. Got the discus tank clean. Picked up some corals today. We ordered <laughs> we ordered a fish from Predatory Fins. So, you know, that fish should be here on Tuesday. It's a good day, man. How about you? Gary, what's going on? Yeah, no problem. No problem, man. I appreciate the support. Thank you for sliding through. Don't see where it give you the option to like. Uh, shit, let's see. I think it's that, it's that heart. Yep, yep, it's the heart, man. It's uh 
So I guess on the screen right there, I guess it's that heart right there that you uh, that you hit. I think that's it. Let's see. I think I think that's it. Somebody help him out. I think that's how you. I think that's how you. Oh, you found it. Okay, cool, cool. Let me see. Ortega Alfredo. I have a question. I have a RDI unit that was that was exposed to hot water for a few minutes. With an R O R R D I, it's R O D I unit breakdown for that. I heard that's bad. I heard that's bad. I don't know if it'll break down for it. Um, just try not to let that happen again. But I, I can't tell you. I don't know. I haven't. I have never exposed my R O D I filter system to hot water. But I hear that's a bad thing. I hear that's a bad thing. All right, all right, Mike. What's happening? What's going on? Man, I appreciate that, Mike. I definitely appreciate that. But yeah, so I got, I got, I ordered a Zebrina Pike from Predatory Fins. Man, I'm so happy about that. I've been wanting this fish for some meat, man. Matter of fact, y'all, I've been wanting this Zebrina Pike since I had Red Skull. Any OG know who Red Skull was? It was my 16 inch bred out of Batpo Pike. Um, amazing fish, amazing fish. And I wanted the Zebrina back then. I wanted the Zebrina back then, but that Zebrina Pike, it, it, it was $550, right? Yeah, $550. So I wasn't going to pay that. I wasn't going to pay that. Worth it, but I wasn't going to pay that. If y'all don't know what the Zebrina Pike looked like, right there. Look it up. If I can, if it's not looking that good on it, there we go. That's probably a good image right there. Beautiful pike, beautiful pike, and I got it from Predatory. Matter of fact, here's what it looked like on Predatory fins. Look at that red, the red fins, damn that like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, about 120 bucks, fifty dollars for shipping, hundred and seventy dollars. Gonna be here Tuesday. It's gonna be about three inches, so I gotta find a location for him. But I, I'm I'm happy about that. So that goes into what. I feel like that you can do to make sure this hobby don't get stale. You know what I mean? Uh, keeping interest, you know, learning about other fish that you might want to keep, getting different aquariums, um, setting the aquariums different ways, um, going to the saltwater side if you're a freshwater fish keeper. If you're a saltwater fish keeper, go to the freshwater side. So having different type, different types of fish, different types of aquariums, um, learning about them, doing the DIY filtration, whether or not you're doing a DIY tank build, if you're doing a stance, all of that allows you to keep your interest in it as these different little details, you know what I mean, that you could use to make sure that the hobby don't really get bored for you. So it's hard for me to get bored with the hobby when there's so much that I still want to keep. Saltwater, freshwater, uh, more tanks that I want to build, different ways, different ecosystems that I want to create. So it's hard to get bored. Definitely hard to get bored. Scuba Steve, what's going on? How do you know when to replace the RODI sediments or whatever you call it? I believe, I believe it's on the filter. I believe it's on the filter. And um, you probably get like three months, three to six months or something like that. Somebody else might be able to help you out with that. I uh <laughs> I haven't replaced mine yet. Haven't replaced mine yet. I still have, still got the same filters on there that I've had on there this whole time. Uh, but it works well, or it works with my with the uh, with the Fowler aquariums. It works with my fish only aquariums. It's not going to really work with the corals. You know, the corals need are more sensitive. They need to make sure that you know everything is running pristine. And the fact that they want you to change them out every three months or six months. Not going to do that. Just not going to do it. You know, some people, some dudes said, you know, I'm not going to say some dude because he's a respect. He's a reputable uh, fish keeper and YouTuber, but not going to say any names. He said he he uh, uses tap water, said he used tap water to uh, make his salt water and to top it off. What y'all think about that? Using, using tap water for your salt water aquariums. What y'all think about that? Mr. Food just bought a 16 inch pike. And an 18-inch Oscar. That's what's up. What kind of pike did you get, Mr. Pooh? 
Gary had a 50 with about a dozen types of Tetris back in the day. Bonnie, the new Tetris was fun. Now I have a Geophagus, Savini, and Albino Griffin. A car, watching them grow out is the best between two to five inches. Absolutely. Absolutely. It is definitely fun watching your fish grow out. A hundred percent. It's so rewarding to see them grow from, you know, two to three inches into, you know, the fish that they turn into. Absolutely. You replace the cartridges of RLDI when your PPM started reading over three. Chicago RC, thank you very much. Thank you for answering that question. Animal Instincts, what's happening with you, bro? What's good with you, man? How you doing? Man, yeah, though. He, uh, he put us on. Chicago RC put us on for sure. So now I know. So now I know, but I don't even check my, I don't even check my water, y'all. Yeah, appreciate you. Definitely send me the picture. How often do y'all check your water? How often do you check that aquarium? I have test kits, but I don't, I don't check. I don't really, I don't really read. I don't really chase the numbers. Um, the only time I check my water, if something go extremely wrong and I can't figure out what's going on with it. If a water change don't fix it, usually, you know what I'm saying? You know whether or not you need a water change. If a water change don't fix it, um, am I fish tracking a certain kind of way? Then I'll start checking the parameters, but I don't really check the water like that. That's good to hear. That's good to hear, Animal Instincts. Danny, what's good with you, man? How you doing? Exactly, Mr. Pooh. Only when it's a problem. Only when it's a problem. What I've learned about chasing those numbers is that literally it's going to have you stressing out. You're going to get bald spots. You're going to get gray hair. You're going to be over there crashing your aquarium. You're going to do more harm than help. A lot of times people will chase these numbers and they cause the problem. You know what I mean? I see in a post on Facebook, somebody say something like, "My, my they, they post a picture, their, their aquarium is gray, all this other stuff, fish on their side, whatever the case may be. I don't know what's going on. I've been doing water changes every day. I don't know what to do. Tell me, please help me. You're doing everything wrong. Sometimes leave the aquarium alone. If you gave your fish, if you did a water change, allow it to, you know, catch up. Allow it to catch up. You don't have to go and do another water change the next day and then another water, water change the next day. you causing a problem. you literally creating a sterile aquarium. You're killing all your beneficial bacteria. And in the end, that's going to hurt your fish more than what it would if you just left it alone. So it's a trip. That's why I learned years ago. I don't chase numbers. I don't chase numbers. You could tell by the by the behavior of your fish. You could tell by by the, by by their personality, what they're doing. You know your schedule of water changes. You know the last time you did a water change. You know what kind of if you have plants. If you don't have plants, there's a lot of different ways. But I feel like watching my fish is the way that I know what's going on with my fish. You know what I mean? I'm not a scientist, and I don't try to be. So I'm not constantly testing, 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 testing. Because again. What I've learned is leaving your fucking aquarium alone will allow you to have healthier fish. When I was in the apartment, y'all, the OGs remember, when I was in the apartment, I was doing water changes twice a week. Twice a week on a 240, and I had three FX6 filters on it. And, um, you know, when I got here, I started having, I got one FX6 filter on it, and I had some plants in there now. I barely even have to do a water change. You know what I'm saying? I don't. I'm not having those issues like I had in the apartment. I was doing too much harm. You know what I mean? I was constantly taking out hella water, constantly starting the cycle over, and I didn't even realize that's what I was doing. So that's what I say about this hobby. I love this hobby so much because you're always learning something. I can learn from you guys. You guys can learn from me, and you know that's the best part about it. We got 29 people in the in the chat. Can we get can we get 15 more likes in the building? Get the 29 people. If you haven't hit that like button, could y'all hit that like button for me? All right, where we at? Where we at? I missed some shit. All right, all right. Okay, okay, okay. Car, I use tap water in my solar tank for water changes at top off. <laughs> you serious, car? Oh, shit. Oh, shit. And I wasn't even talking about you, bro. No, I wasn't talking about you. Hot man, that's that's what's up, man. Could you could you like elaborate for us a little bit more? Could you, tell, could you tell us a little bit more about that? And I don't want to put you on front street, but I'm definitely curious about that. That's what's up. That's what's up. 
Chicago, I always check my PPM and my RODI water before making a batch of new water. I check salinity and pH daily. Shit. Yeah, man. Yeah, as long as it works. However, whatever method you whatever method you're comfortable with, you should definitely do that. And my Insta have test kits, but I don't use them either. That's what I'm talking about, brother. We're on the same page. We're on the same page. And again, not to say nothing against the people that do check all the time. I just don't have time for that. It's salinity. When I make my water, I base it off of what the what the measurements is on the on the container. I think it's about it said uh, following this regimen for the instant ocean. If you put a half a cup for every gallon, half a cup of um, salt for every gallon of water, it'll give you one point zero two five. I just trust it. I put in however many uh cap many um cups in the container, fill it up with the water. I just assume that that's the right amount. You know, might not be the best way, but that's just how I've been doing it. J.R. J. Rivera, what's going on with you? Mike Crumb, I have South American Cichlid Salvini. I like it. I like it. J. I'm getting sick of my discus already. Those damn jerks. Discus are an art. Discus are really just about just looking at you know what i'm saying like i don't feel like they have a ton of personality they, they don't do a lot they don't really they don't really interact with the skate that much um just maybe start up another aquarium start another aquarium richard exactly let it mature exactly dgs what's going on with you if i could keep a blue spot puffer and a valentine in the same tank same 46 gallon um I don't know what a newbie day is. Oh, a newbie. Okay, so you're saying you're a newbie. Can I keep a blue spot puffer and a Valentini in the same 46 gallon? Let me check out the blue spot puffer right quick. I don't know what a blue spot puffer is. But I know the Valentini, you could definitely keep that in a smaller aquarium. Blue spot puffer. All right, there we go. Um, It says that it only gets about... Oh, okay. Yeah, you talking about you talking about one of those? It says if you talking about one of those, it say that it only needs a fifty gallon. Gets about five inches, so you could probably do that. You could probably do. You probably get away with that, Mister Pooh. I did a water change on my two hundred because my fish was breathing hard. Shit. If they breathe on hard, Mr. Pooh, it might be because they need some more um, some more circulation, you know. Uh, make sure your circulation pump is pointing towards the top of the water. Yeah, you're going to get water evaporation. But what it does is it allows the oxygen exchange. Also, um, if you need an air stone, get an air stone in there. But you need that water movement. Get that water movement going. You definitely got to make sure you got good water movement. And I'm the reason why you bought the Python. Yeah, man. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yo, Animal Instincts, you know what to do? Car, Malawi, Malawi Lake 40. I don't remember the last time I checked my water. Over 20 years in a hobby. We on the same page, bro. We on the same page. Yeah, man. Um, Like I said, I pay attention to the fish. We on the same page. Gary second. Damn, I'm way up there. Okay. All right. Let me uh, Let me get to these comments. Second, that canister and HO back hanging on a back filter on a 50, one water change a month. Now 75 with FX4 and air stones for circulation, 20 gallon change once a month. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, that's a fact. Exactly. You definitely don't have to do water changes. I seen somebody say, oh, man, hey, you know, y'all know the Facebook groups be funny as hell, right? Y'all know y'all sometimes see that shit. Man, they be crazy, right? So if you do, that's fish police over there, right? So if you say you only do your water changes once a month, once a week, or once every two weeks, oh, they I didn't I don't even be in those chats like that. I just be spectating. I ain't gonna lie. I, I spectate like like some of the seven people that ain't hit the like button. I spectate like y'all. So um, there we go. Can we get those seven uh seven likes going? But um, yeah, I seen I was watching, I was watching the you know the comments. Somebody said that they did a water change every two weeks. Oh, they got on their ass. They was like. You got to do water changes once a week. If you don't do a 40% water change once a week, you're a terrible fish keeper, blah, 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 blah. 
man, they so judgy over there. They so judgy over there. Meanwhile, the longer you're in the hobby, the more you learn. I appreciate y'all for getting those likes. So thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um, the longer you're in the hobby, the more you learn. And you learn that leaving the tank alone, allowing it to mature is the best thing that you could do. Father Fish says it. The, I don't want to say he says it's the best, but Father Fish is very knowledgeable. And he says a lot about leaving your tank alone. Don't disturb a substrate. Don't constantly go in there taking out that taking that water out. Allow it to do what it's supposed to do. You know what I'm saying? And once you, if you're just adding the tap the top off from evaporation, a lot of the time that's enough. If you have like plants in your aquarium, I told you I haven't had it on an 800 gallon pile right there. I've had to do two water changes on it in the past going on two years. Two water changes. You know what I'm saying? Like because of the plants. It's an ecosystem, you know. Do y'all know that the substrate is also a form of filtration? It's also a form of filtration. You know what I'm saying? So having that substrate bed is going to allow a lot of the beneficial bacteria to colonize and is going to be able to facilitate your nitrogen cycle. So it's not just your hang on the back. It's not just your canister. It's not just your sump. It's also in that substrate in the bottom of your aquarium. But let me get back to these comments. I'm running. Oh, shit. Let me get back to these comments. All right, Chicago RC, I use a cheap $12 pH checker from Amazon, but I got a Hanna salinity checker. Yeah, I check my salinity. I check the salinity sometimes, but I don't check the water every single time. Mr. Pooh, I did that once in my saltwater tank and had an algae bloom. I'm assuming that you're talking about that that um that tap water. Yeah, I don't I don't think I will I, I can't do that. I can't I can't do that. I can't do that. I, I'm not I can't put the fresh water in uh in my saltwater aquarium. I feel like all my fish might get sick. Might be wrong, but that's how I feel. All right. Fish Tank Frank, what's good with you? I can't stop buying white cloud minnows. <laughs> what you do with those? You feeding some fish? All right. DG's off topic. What you putting on that bench press? Um, that, that's, that's a two, 235, 235. Man, it's uh, I'm weak, man. I'm weak right now, man. I'm trying to get back up to 300. I want to get back up to working out with 300, 315. So, uh, yeah, man, I'm trying to get back, man. I'm trying to get back. All right, water change every one, water change to every two months, 50 to 80 percent. Yeah, on the um African African Sigma tank, though, I do water changes probably, probably every two weeks, twice a month. Twice a month on those because it's overstocked. I guess the tap water is where I stay. Has good levels. I do those trace elements. The only problem is it causes is the algae that feeds from the sil sil silica in the tap. Okay. All right. Well, at least that, I mean, at least your fish are still alive. You know what I'm saying? I, I thought that the fish would die from using tap water. Yes, sir. Chicago says, yes, yeah, surface agitation is key. That's a fact. Think the heat. All right. Malawi Lake 40. Crazy. Darth Raider. My fault. Damn. Good advice about water change. The less you mess with them, the more you get out of them. Water bill for three months is $63. Mike, you on you uh you on point. You on point. I wish my water bill. Man, I I man, cleaning that, um, cleaning that pond yesterday. I probably waste like like fifteen hundred gallons, but that pond is immaculate right now. I hope y'all seen those shorts. Speaking of which, like I, I got another video I got to put out for y'all today. Well, tomorrow I got to work on it today. Put it out tomorrow. You know, I did a little water change on that on that uh, on that twenty gallon salt. Uh, added the new corals into there. Got two new corals. So it's doing it's doing good, man. It's doing it's. It's doing phenomenal. I'm not gonna lie. I'm hella. I'm really happy that I got back into corals because you know that's the element of the saltwater hobby that I feel like everybody should touch on a little bit. You know what I mean? Had to do some predators, but a nice little coral tank. You know, now I'm about ready to add some fish to help keep that that substrate. You know, moved around. Maybe I get a starfish. Yeah, maybe I'll go ahead and get me a sand starfish. Start off with that. Gary, you so said you love the big pond. Thank you, bro. Thank you, bro. 
Teasy, I did that with my royal peacock bass and it died because I was too worried about the water being dirty. Yeah, man. Yeah, sorry to hear that. Like I said, it's best, it's best to just leave it alone sometimes. Best to just leave it alone sometimes. I just touch the surface with vacuuming. I only keep African cichlids in a pair of in a pair of 135 gallons crushed coral substrate. I rely on that running to FX sixes and wave makers. Okay, Richard. Okay. Yeah, I like to um I like to vacuum my sand. I like to vacuum the sand. Um it's a preference. It's a preference. Uh, it's I, I vacuumed the sand in that pond yesterday in that in that um, the koi pond. I was in there, you know, vacuuming and sand about that. You know what I'm saying? Substrate vacuuming. But again, it's a preference. You know, I, I, it's it's rewarding and it's so satisfying to see all of that detritus coming out of that coming out of your tank or your pond. You know, but you don't have to. You don't have to. All right. Fish tank Frank just loving how to school. They in a Fajaca tank for movement. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I was thinking about getting some rose line barbs for my discus tank. What do y'all, what do y'all think about that? Anybody have some discus? What are some good um dither fish and community fish that go well with the with the discus? I really want some rose lines. I, I really want those. They get kind of big, they're beautiful. Y'all don't know what the rose line um. The rose line sharks, I'm saying barbs, rose line sharks. I don't even know how big they get, but I definitely, let's see. All right, all right, here we go. Beautiful, how big did they get? Damn, they only live three or six years? And they get about four and a half, three and a half to 4.3 inches. Damn, they only live three to six years. That's crazy. Damn, y'all. All right, so those are the those are the rose line sharks. I might not get them now if they only live three to six years. I didn't know that. That's crazy. Kenneth, what's going on? How you doing tonight? I look at I have. Have you had any experience with the Zool bass or golden bass? I've had no experience with the Zool or golden bass. Now I do have. I believe the Orinoco. They were sold to me as Kelberry. I don't know why these fish stores. Are selling everybody kale berries? Kale berries, you get them, and then all of a sudden they grow out and they're not kale berry. But I'm probably gonna have to hit up predatory fins again and order me a couple of those uh spider peacock bass. Y'all know what those look like? All right, all right. Where else we gonna well, I'll pull that up? Chicago, what do I dose? I have um the essential elements, I have magnesium. I dose calcium. Um, it's a few different things I dose. It's a few different things I dose. I can't tell you all off top, but I, I put out a little video and I'll show you that. Let me show you what the spider kelberry peacock bass look like, y'all. Man, predatory got these on lock, man. Oh, they sold out. Y'all see the patterns on these fish? Crazy, right? And they only 35. Yeah, I'm wondering so. Yeah, I'm going to order me a couple of those. Agreed. Well, we got right now, we got we got 31 people in the building, 35 likes, so we ahead of the game. Brandon Mana, have ever going to keep freshwater stingrays? Never. I'm never keeping those. They get real big, and, um, I mean, that's enough said. They get hella big, you know what I mean? And you got to have a certain type of aquarium just for those, so... I don't ever plan on setting up an aquarium that's catered to something like that. I'm cool. I'm straight off those. The saltwater ones, I might get another Cortez Stingray. Maybe I'll get a male, you know. Maybe I'll get Lisa Ray, a, you know, a boyfriend or something, a husband later on down the line when I build that 1,000-gallon. But definitely not doing this the um, freshwater Stingrays. Mr. Poo, over a year in my front Tosa tank, just did my Ambuna. But that's because I moved him. Okay, okay, okay. Using UV, Romy, Rome, really. Using UV clarifiers with freshwater fish, yes or no? Yeah. Um, I don't think it's going to, it's not going to hurt. It's not going to hurt. You shouldn't really have algae like that in your aquarium, though. Um, you really shouldn't have algae like that in your aquarium. 
If you have a ton of algae in your aquarium, it's another problem. You have your overfeeding, so a lot of nutrients. Um, you're under filtering the tank, you know, and you're not keeping up with those water changes. So if you if you correct those three things, you don't have to worry about a UV clarifier. That's you know might be good on a pond, but on your tank, you shouldn't need that. Car, I have a liar tail damsel. Those are some nice ones. Those are some nice ones. Um, black clownfish and a basilet, and they are still kicking it with some coral. You got corals and you using tap water. Chat, we man, y'all hearing it? So, so car is able to keep corals and saltwater fish and use tap water to make it salt water and to top off. That's how easy the saltwater hobby is, y'all. That's how easy. Or 1978, what do you think about red-tailed catfish? Well, you missed the topic the other day. I was talking about how they need to be banned. So the way I feel about red-tailed catfish, get them things out the damn hobby. I feel like they are, I like the way they look. I think most of us could agree that they are some sick-looking fish. But knowing how big they get, it's just sad that a lot of people buy these fish with absolutely no idea what they plan on doing with them when they outgrow their aquarium or if they outgrow the next three aquariums because it's going to outgrow all those aquariums because they need to be in a pond. They get four foot. If you don't know how big they get, check out um, check out Ohio Fish Rescue. They have some of the biggest ones I've ever seen. They have a 56,000-gallon pool inside of their house, and they have these red tails. And tiger shovel nose hybrid, which is a tiger shovel nose and a red tail hybrid, and they're four foot and bigger 56,000 gallons, y'all. So, um, they do it the best, they do it the best out of everybody. They got the biggest setup that I know of, you know what I mean. And if you're gonna do it, that's how you should do it. But, um, a lot of people don't have a pool that they want to convert into, you know, a pond for their fish. So that's how I feel. that's what I feel about you know red tail catfish, beautiful fish, but unless you know what you're doing, I feel like that they shouldn't be so easily ready yet. You know, at the at any any fish store you go to, it's just too easy to acquire them, and you know you have Ohio Fish Rescue having to collect these fish from a lot of people, or you know they release them somewhere and then they die because you know it get too cold. All these different things. Yeah, that's how I feel about red tail catfish. Brandon Mana, gold rose lines are gorgeous. I agree with gold. What? Gold rose lines? I don't even know what those look like, man. You about to have me look it up. And if I'm if I'm not getting to your comment yet, I apologize. I'm trying to get to everybody. Meanwhile, keep the conversation going. Oh, see what this dinner is gonna taste like. They're spicy. Ooh. It is spicy. What do you mean? Salt? <laughs> no, no salt. It is spicy. A little bit salt? Huh? More salt? Do you want some water? I could drink that coffee. That was spicy. <laughs> Sorry. You did, that. you did that on purpose. Oh, man. So, so what, do I, what should I add? Um, a little pepper. Well, what kind of, what, what, you, what, what, what you use? Cayenne to make it so spicy? Chili, yeah. I would use a little bit of pepper because it's a different taste. I would probably hit it with a little bit more onion powder, a little bit more salt. Garlic. Okay. Yeah, just a little bit. All right, yeah, other than that, it's good. Okay. That shit is spicy as hell. Sorry. So all good. That's funny. Yeah, she got me, y'all. Oh, snap. Okay. The gold, the gold rose line sharks. Those are nice. Yeah. Yeah, I like those. Thank you for putting me on to those. All right, where we at? Where we at? For real, I hear you. That's why I don't dig deep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. The scale scholar, what's going on with you, man? How you doing? Just chilling me. I'm over here. I'm just enjoying the conversation with y'all. Had a good day. Went to work, came home, finally got that crazy grass cut, front of the house and the back of the house. Yesterday, I was able to finally, man, clean that, man. They say get a pond. It'll be fun. It's fun when it look good, but cleaning that thing, luckily I watch enough videos to know that if you drain it all the way, 
you get in the side that you get inside that pond and you pressure wash all of that rock, that's the ticket. So that's what I did. Drained it all the way out, um, pressure washed all the rock, kept on sucking out all of that crap. Now that thing is immaculate. It's how it's supposed to be. How it's supposed to be. Made me want to get some more koi. I definitely think I want to get some more koi now. I still haven't got my gold one. Maybe get a gold one, get a black one. Yeah, yeah it's about that time. It's about that time. Just a hookup on a rose line, bro. Just just a hookup on a rose line. Sharks, Mr. Pooh. Yeah, man, I, I do want to get the sharks. I do want to get the sharks. Mike, back in the day, undergravel filters where it was up, all the dirt under the gravel. Yeah, Mike, uh, yeah, that, that was just a man. My mom, my mom had had the under the gravel filters. You know, I I I thought they were nice. You know, I thought they were nice when I got into the hobby hella years ago. That's what I had too. You know, I started at 10. Um, so we had those as well. But, you know, as you learn, you know how much of a, a problem that is. You know what I mean? All right. Okay. Where we at? Where we at? Cody Miller. Yo, bro. Yo, bro. You going to be in a predatory fans fight? Hell no. Nah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let those guys do that. I'm not doing that. I'm straight. I was uh, I was going to get the Zool, but they're too big. You know the biggest the biggest peacock bass is the Tamensis. You know that the Tamensis is the Tamensis get huge. But yeah, check out predatory fins. Check out predatory fins, man. Go ahead and um and get the spider kill berries. Get the spider kill berries, Mister Pooh. Where we at? Uh, where we at? Where we at? Where we at? Being in a direct sunlight will build algae. Yeah, that's true. Yep, all on the glass, all on the glass. Um, a lot of my tanks are in the direct sunlight, but it's but again, it's not really in a water column. It just grows on the glass. You know what I mean? Get your algae eater to uh, to fix that. But yeah, you still shouldn't have a lot of algae in your water column. You know, you shouldn't have green water. You know what I'm saying? That green water is going to come from the from the nutrients in that water. Cody Miller, you need a largemouth bass, bro. We have one, and he's a beast. I send you a baby to grow out, but I don't know what your regulations are in, in California is. I appreciate that, Cody. Um, matter of fact, I have a few people that was actually um that was actually willing to catch a, a bass for me, but you know that cold water. You know, they're cold water. I was going to throw a bass inside the pond or whatever. But, you know, now I got the koi. The koi are beautiful. You get to see it from uh, from the window and things like that. Uh, but, yeah, instead of the bass, that's why I just went ahead and went with the peacock bass. You know, they're tropical. You know what I'm saying? They're still a bass. And uh, I could keep them with other fish. So, yeah, but you're right. They are a beast. They are. But I don't know. Mr. Pooh, yeah, the shovel nose is better. I got a nice tiger shovel nose. And they, if you get like the Tigrinus, oh, the Tigrinus is also a nice shovel nose. Or it looks like a shovel nose. All right. Yeah, okay. Reezy, I try using tap water with salt for my quarantine tank. And after a couple of days, the water got cloudy and put a crusty film on the glass. So tap water is no for me. Yeah, Reezy, I don't think I could do it. I but um I I I you know <laughs> Car Car said it though. He said he gets away with it, but you know, I take so I take off my hat to that. You know, I take off my hat to him being able to do that. I just know for myself, I know I couldn't do it. Just, you know, if something was to happen, if I was losing in my fish from using tap water, you know, I'd be sick. But if I started off that way and I knew it was working, you know. All right, where we at? Where we at? Where we at? All right, grills for fresh water. What's grills, man? I don't know what grills are. Rob and Rico, you should fight in their fundraising boxing match, bro. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, I'm not trying to do no fundraising boxing match. I'm 40 years old. I really don't care about that. No, I need to get paid, man. I need to get paid. 
cool off just doing something like that for fun. I'm straight. Any idea where to purchase Meso Hairs Fest Day? Yeah, you got to uh, check with your local fish store. Um, check around, as a matter of fact. And then if they don't have them, you could also call and ask if they could actually order them. Let's see what grills are. What is a grill fish? Oh, the Holy Grill? Nah, this ain't. I don't know what a grill is. I don't know what a grill is for fresh water. All right, where we at? Any idea where to purchase? Yeah, okay, okay. What's going on, Rob? All right, not blessed with that good water. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Car said here, nobody, everybody said he's blessed with that good water. You must be, man. Yeah. Brandon Mine, are you asking me what a dream fish is? Kenneth, do you know how's the shipping with predatory fans? Because so Ken, um, so they told me that they ship on uh I think it's Mondays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays if you request Thursdays. So we ordered the pike last night around 11 p.m. They uh they we called earlier because we didn't get the we didn't get the um confirmation email. Um uh, it was crazy to hear Rob voice on the phone and um and he said that they're going to ship it out on Tuesday. Um, and then so, no, we said, he said he's going to ship it out on Monday and we'll get it Tuesday overnight, 50 bucks, $50.13. Um, and then so then, then uh, Kevin called later on and confirmed that they will be shipping out the fish on Monday. So, so yeah, I think that's, that's how it works, you know, uh, Monday, Wednesdays, and then, then Thursdays, at, you know, if you request it. So, because they do overnight shipping. So if you if they order if you ordered in ordered on Monday you'll get it Tuesday if you order it on Wednesday or you know you'll get it Thursday and then Thursday you'll get it Friday so that's how they do it where we at where we at uh, Reezy said hey, hello I feel that I got a RODI and even water looks crystal clear yeah yeah. Cody Miller, Cleveland, that pie ball catfish, still doing good. Just just need him to get hungry. I don't think I'm going to sell him, though. I think I'm going to breed it and sell the babies for the hobbyist interest. Yeah, that's all I know is that that is a beautiful catfish. That is a beautiful catfish, I swear. Let me show you. Let me show the chat. I want to show the chat what that, what that looked like. Man, never seen one before. Have y'all ever? I want to make sure I, I show you a good picture, show everybody a good picture. Look at this, y'all. Look at that catfish. Pie ball, pie ball blue catfish. I doubt that. It says it's in stock for $24. Y'all see that $25? Hell no. Nah. Hell no. Nah. It's super rare. Let's see if it's if if there's a site that actually have it. Let's see. I don't believe it. Hell nah. So that's albino. Yeah, super rare. Super rare. Nope. Nope. Yeah, Cody. Yeah, that's what you should do. That's what you should do. I don't know if I'd be interested because you know they get big. They get big, but man. Beautiful, beautiful fish. All right. The fighters get paid, but Rod and King. King DIY is giving what they make to Brian Barsley family for the Legacy Aquarium. That's what's up. That's what's up. Good for them. Good for them. Um, I was sick when that happened to Brian. I was sick when that happened to Brian. Brian was always somebody so full of energy, learned a lot from him. And um, man, you know, he definitely changed some lives and added a lot to the world and got a lot of people in the, to reptiles. And man, I didn't even know about, uh, fucking, I didn't know about 
had more than half the snakes that he was showing. You know what I mean? I didn't even know that that was even possible. Um, man, it was like a fucking uh, grain of sand on the beach, you know, as far as with the knowledge that I knew compared to what I learned from what he was doing. So, yeah. Yeah, that's what's up, though. You know, but shit, man, they good. You know, they good financially anyway, you know? Hats off to those dudes. I heard of the pie ball snake. Brian Barsley had some. No, that wasn't the pie. Um, we're not talking about the pie ball snake. We're talking about the pie ball catfish, bro. We're talking about the pie ball catfish. Let me pull that up one more time for you, Car. Let me pull that up for you one more time. The pie ball catfish. Oh, it's a and it's a channel catfish at that. Look at this joint. Look at that. See that? Let me pull up another one. Let me pull up another picture. Check this one out. Look at that. Looks like a cow. Beautiful, man. Beautiful, beautiful. Look at that. Look how tall, look how long that is. Look how long that is. It's going from his nose down past his chin. Damn. Yeah, if I had like a, a big outdoor pond, I would definitely get something like that. Yeah, hundred percent. That thing is definitely sick. But yeah, so how do y'all? If y'all haven't answered that question, just let me know. How do y'all stay interested in the hobby? Like, what techniques do y'all use? Brandon, how's the plywood built? It looks the same way it did the last time you seen it. No progress on it. No progress on it at all. The fact that I gotta re, I gotta redo all of that. I'm not in any rush, man. It's, you know. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work, man. You know, uh, between the things that I have to maintain already, all these aquariums, outdoor pond, the house, the yard, my business, you know, I don't have, to, I mean, I don't want to say I don't have time, but, you know, deconstructing that thing to rebuild it, you know, I'm not in any rush. I'm not in no rush whatsoever. I've honestly been thinking about whether or not I want to reconfigure the whole thing. You know, um, I know I want to do a nice thousand gallon for the salt water. You know, and uh, I would love to go bigger than that. I would love to figure out a different setup. Because in reality, if I didn't have the 150 and that 75 gallon right there, um, that allows some nice space, get the couch up out of there. Move that corner tank or get the tank. Obviously, that, that got to be deconstructed. But I'm just trying to figure out is if that's really the route that I want to go. Do I really want to do a corner tank? It's posing a little bit of a problem, you know. Um, if I wasn't going to do a corner tank, this wouldn't – if I wasn't doing a corner tank, I could literally build a, build a stand that supports the weight of the aquarium, build the aquarium on there, make it about four foot tall, something like that. I don't have to do stack – pieces of lumber it just would be easier all the way around so i'm just trying to wrap my mind around how could i do that you know the discus they're in the 150 i plan on keeping them in there so i'm just trying to figure out the best way of going about it you know before i go and buy all of this lumber and then i'm like committed you know what i mean um yeah that's just that's just where i'm at with it i just gotta figure out whether or not that's really what i want to do Right. What you ask, man? Yeah, Rob definitely got some new fish. Definitely got some. Well, shit. You seen the new fish? I got the shark. Got the tiger fish. Also got the marble um, vieja. Cody, blue cats get 100 pounds plus way bigger than a channel cat. The video the catfish I sent, he's going to be three foot at least. I was underestimating it at two and a half. 
Damn. Yeah, hundred pounds. Yeah, um, I wouldn't. I would not. I probably wouldn't be having a a, a hundred pound fish. I don't think any of my fish get a hundred pounds. That's a big ass fish. I just started all I got. It's two clowns quarantining. One more. One more week. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So you definitely not uh, not getting bored with the hobby. The fish keeping help my mental health, so I don't get bored. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know, um, I think this is this is this is why this is why I try to. You know, I don't want to try to say I push people off on a hobby or push this hobby off on people, but that's why I try to bring as many people as I can to the hobby because it is therapeutic. You know, you do find serenity, you know, in watching your aquarium, hearing your aquarium. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, if you drink beer, you know, just kick up your feet, watch your aquarium. You know, um, if you smoke, you know, five blaze one up, you know what I'm saying? And, and watch your aquarium. You know what I mean? It's just, it's something about it. It's something about it. I started 30 years ago. 30 years ago is when I first got introduced to the hobby, start off with a 10 gallon aquarium and having the guppies and the mollies and the painted, uh, painted glass fish and all these different kind of fish. And, uh, you know, I got bit by the bug early. You know, I would go to my grandma's house and she have a nice 40 gallon um, guppies and quarry cats in there. And I just sit there and stare at her tank. I would go to the pet stores and just get lost for hours at the pet store. So, uh, yeah, that's why my, you know, that's why I can't just have one tank fish room, you know. Uh, Kenneth, what type of pike did you get, and what's the size? Ken, I bought a, a Zebrina pike. I bought a Zebrina pike, and it's supposed to be three inches. Let me show you what the Zebrina pike look like in case you don't know. Right here, man. Right here. That right there is the Zebrina Pike. And it's going to come in at three inches. Car have the birds bred. No, they have not. 24, do I smoke? No, I did. Shit gave me asthma. Gave me asthma, so I quit. Yeah. Care more about my lungs than, uh, you know, getting high. Cody, when you going to get you a website and start selling some of those dovi and other fry you breed. Um, Cody, I uh, I wasn't intentionally breeding any fish. And as far as starting a website, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know when I plan on doing that. Um, I would love to probably do that and start selling some merch. Um, as far as the fry, the dovi feste fry, man, I need to get rid of those. I need to get rid of those fry as fast as possible. The thing that's been holding everything up is finding out how much it costs to ship. That's the problem. I got containers. I got bags. I got the styrofoam. I got all of that. You know, I don't have the peanuts in there, you know, to keep the bags from moving around. But I have all the stuff I need. I just need to figure out how much it costs. And I need to get rid of those, uh, those hybrids because I want to get those African cichlids in that 225. So I got to get rid of those hybrids like soon, as soon as possible. Mr. Puso, with aggression, is it better to take aggressor or the not aggressor, not aggressor out? Um, either or. I feel like it's not really a black and white type of deal. Um, you know, sometimes if you take out the fish that was getting, you know, picked on, the aggressor will find another fish to pick on. Um let me give you an example. Talking about the African cichlids. If it's the African cichlids and I have an aggressive fish, I probably would just add some more African cichlids because it's easier to overstock an African cichlid tank. If we're talking about um, something like, you know, if my dovi was picking on another fish, I probably would, you know, put the dovi on punishment. I've done that before. I've done that a couple of times. You know, you take out the aggressor, you know, and you keep them in another tank for, a couple of weeks until the fish that was getting picked on reestablished itself and becomes territorial and dominant over a certain area, then you could reintroduce them. And sometimes that will be enough. But when you have an aggressive fish, you have to 
try a, a multitude of different methods. You know, side breaks help that. Overstocking help that. Removing the fish that's getting picked on helps that. Removing the fish that's the, bu that's the bully helps that. So you got to try all of those different things. You know what I mean? Because sometimes you might have a big aggressive fish and you can't put that aggressive fish long term in a smaller aquarium or you might put that aggressive fish in another aquarium and then it start bullying the fish in that aquarium. You know what I mean? So it's just a different a variety of different ways that you got to try to, you know, uh, work yourself through that. All right. Rob, three years ago, I started wishing six months. I went, I went from a five or went from a 55 to a 220. All right. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. Six <laughs> Six months, you went from a 55 to a 220. That's what's up. That's what's up. That's a nice jump. Now you got a nice quarantine tank. Oh, you said within. Okay, I didn't catch that. So started within six months, you went from the 55 to the 220. Yeah, that's a nice quarantine tank, that 55 gallon. It's a nice, that's a nice quarantine. That's your pool, he said, painted fish. Yeah. All right. When's the big tank going to be started? I don't know when the big tank is going to be started. I don't know. It's going to be a while. I'll tell you that. I'm in absolutely no rush. Cody said, bro, you need to sell us those fry or you can use your viewers as a way to test shipping. Send a guppy overnight. See how we go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, Man, let me know who's serious. I mean, if you really want those, if you really want some of those, I mean, shit, I got some nice size ones in there now. If you really want them, you could get them. You could get them. Let me know. Email me. T uh, uh, TFC. Uh, what is it? Shit, I don't even know that damn email. Let's see. Let me see what the hell that email is. All right, so the fish corner 0219 at gmail.com. Email me if you really want some of those fry. We'll definitely figure out. I'm ready to get rid of them. If you want them, if you want some of them, let me know. We can really make that happen. It's about that time. I really want to get the fest day. They are beautiful. I agree with you. The fest they are nice. They are nice. If you get the female, the males don't look that good, but the females are amazing. What size should I move a tiger shovel nose from a fit from a 75 to the pond? Yeah, you definitely need a pond for the tiger shovel nose. My my pond has 800 gallons, and that's not gonna be the um the end all, you know, size for that for that for that fish. If you could get you a pond that's a thousand, man, a couple thousand gallons, it could probably live in there for life. Mr. Poo, I bought the two black belt vieja and the one beat up the other. Now the Midas is beating on everything else. All right, all right. So the problem is that that Midas is the most aggressive fish in that aquarium. And that's the problem. Now, if you put, you're gonna have to add some more big fish into that aquarium. And I'm talking about some some fish that has some aggression on them. Oscars are not that aggressive. You know what I mean? They're aggressive when you're talking about compared to another fish that's, you know, a passive fish. Same thing for the Vieja. You know, the Vieja is not on a level of, of Midas. You know what I mean? People get that kind of confused. They think aggressive is aggressive. It's levels to it. You know, just like the Midas cichlid and the Buddy Cofferai. You know, the Buddy Cofferai is more aggressive than the Midas cichlid. You know, and then the Dovi. The Dovi is more aggressive than both of those. But if you need some tank mates, for that Midas cichlid, you're probably going to have to switch up the whole tank, you know, or add, you know, I want to say, if I say put in some aggressive fish like the the Buddy Cofferai, which would be okay, you know what I mean? It might be a real problem for your black belt. Uh, but adding the Buddy Cofferai, adding you a pike in there, adding, um, you know, a nice size Feste, a nice size Red Tiger Motoguins. Um, a jaguar or something like that, you'll be good. You'll be good. Pin the email. All right, I got you.
zero two one. Now, let me uh, go ahead and send. Let me go ahead and put the um, put the damn email in here. Let me see. All right, there we go. All right. All right, so it's pen, y'all. So there we go. That's the email. If y'all really want to have some of those fry, we can make that happen. Ever owned a king parrot? Ah, got a fucking Charlie horse. God. Ah. No, I've never owned a king parrot. I'm not really a fan of the parrot fish. I just don't. I don't like them. I don't like them. They're aggressive, but the size of them. And the fact that they got these small ass mouths and, you know, all the fish that I keep are aggressive. You know, that's what got me into the hobby. You know, I like aggressive fish and uh, I don't really have a tank that will work well with, with the pair of fish. But yeah, king pairs are nice. I've seen those on predatory fins. Luke Mark, do you like salt water or fresh water more? This is a conversation from the last one. Um... I like them both. I can't pick. I can't pick. There are certain fish that I like that's fresh water, certain fish that I like that's salt water. Salt water fish, more beautiful, more selection, more options. Fresh water, I started with the fresh water. You know what I'm saying? That's fresh water, you know, uh, you know, that's where my heart at. You know what I'm saying? So I couldn't give it up. I couldn't, I could never not have an arowana. Just like at this point, I could never not have an eel. And what's going on with you, man? What's happening with you? How you doing? What's one fish you would own if you could fish that are illegal to own in your state? Man, Asian arowana, man. That's an excellent question. Asian arowana, man. I would love to have a gold Asian arowana. I really want one. I wish I could own one. That would be the fish. That would be the fish. I challenge you to keep a fish you never kept. I'm constantly keeping fish that I've never kept. Um, I never kept a wolf fish. I got a wolf fish now. Um, I never kept, you know, the um, the brackish water line fish. Now I got that. I'm constantly buying the fish that I've never kept before. I don't really like to keep the fish. I don't like to keep on buying over and over again the same fish that I've always had. You know what I'm saying? Um, just like those four electric blue jack Dempsey's, you know, every time I get them, they die. So I've never successfully kept those. Now I got four of them, you know, trying to grow those out. I just bought the marble vieja, never owned one of those. So I bought that. So I'm always the Giardini, never owned a Giardini, never owned the albino silver arowana. So I'm constantly buying, you know, the fish that I've never kept, you know, just bought the horn shark, never had that before. Just bought the um the Vitaitis tiger fish. Never owned one of those before. So that's that's how I keep that's how I keep my interest in a hobby. I keep buying the fish that I've never had before. So yeah, I do that all the time. Amir, hi, my Oscar fish didn't eat for a week. What should I do? Um, fish could go a long periods of time without eating. Um, they don't have to eat every day or even every couple of days, you know, I've had eels that didn't eat for a couple of weeks. So uh, don't stress yourself out too much. Long as he's looking healthy, long as he's acting normal, you know, you don't see no sunken abdomen. Uh, all of those are, those are, all those are signs that, you know, that your fish is good. Try different foods, try different things, you know, um, try different, different uh, dry foods, floating food sticks, you could try a little piece of tilapia. You could try a silver side. You know, you could try earthworm. Try different things to see if you can persuade him to eat. Um, but again, as long as he's acting normal, looking healthy, don't look sick, clear eyes, you know, I wouldn't stress too much. Car, you must need some potassium for those Charlie horses, man. Yeah, you're probably right, man. You're probably right, man. It also, it might have been that over overworking yesterday. You know what I'm saying? Like, the last time I got a Charlie horse, it was because 
you know, and my, you know, I was doing, I was doing ceiling tiles, you know, so for four hours, I was climbing up and down the ladder. Well, meanwhile, I don't even really, I don't really work my legs so much, man. I don't really work my legs too much. So, you know, climbing up and down that ladder, you know, for four hours at a time or four hours in a day, um, my legs was tired, you know, my, my, my hamstrings were tired. And then today, you know, I was working on the pond yesterday, just got done cutting the grass today. So, but yeah, probably do need some potassium. Grab me a banana soon. Stevie Z's reptiles. I want a tiger shark. I bet you do. I bet you do. Hopefully one day you got you get a, a space big enough to where you can own one, man. Bro, the ponds are sick. Thank you. I appreciate that. Mr. Pooh, Texas, Trimac, Jaguar, Jack Dempsey, Arowana, Oscars, and a couple other things. Okay. So far, the most aggressive fish is still the Midas cichlid. In Texas, is more aggressive than all the other ones. But, um, yeah, that Midas cichlid is the most aggressive in there, Mr. Pooh. It's the most aggressive fish in there. And I wouldn't recommend throwing like a buddy cough rye in there because then it's going to be a problem for your Oscar. And yeah, you might just have to remove them. I'll probably just, re I will remove that Midas cichlid. I will take the Midas cichlid out and put them in another tank for a few weeks, even a month. Take them out, put them in another tank for a month. Uh, possibly add another fish into that. No, nah, then they might act like you could possibly add another fish into that aquarium. And then add them back later on so it'd be kind of like different for them. Um, even if it was another Midas Red Devil or something like that. But that's what that's what I would recommend. I would definitely, in that situation right there, I would take that Midas cichlid out for a while. 24, you say you're going to need a feeding video soon. Man, you be missing it. Um, I'm probably going to go live on TikTok tonight and... And do a feeding video. Uh, we just did a feeding video two days ago. I tell you all all the time on TikTok. It's, the, it's at the fish corner on TikTok. I go live all the time. It's a lot easier. Like right now, I'm I'm sitting here having I'm sitting here stuck at the at the um, laptop. You know what I'm saying? If it was on TikTok, I could move around, show you the aquariums, do a feeding, things like that. So um, it's a lot easier to do this, you know, on TikTok. You know, and I do it live. You know, so. You know, if you're not following me over there on TikTok, follow me over there on TikTok. You know, you'll see live feedings, you know, a couple times throughout the week, different kind of content, the kind of, the kind of content where I'm not just sitting here stuck at the screen. You know, it might be a little bit more interesting. Uh, Cody, you think you can do some videos when you go to the local fish store? I see to enjoy watching videos of all the fish I can't buy. <laughs> Yeah, I could do that. Yeah, I could do that, Cody. Yeah, I could do that. And more DIY fish food videos. Yeah, it's about time that I that I made some more of that DIY fish food. I need to do it for the salt water, and I need to do that for the fresh water, especially with the damn shark, man. I still haven't got the horn shark to eat. So, yeah, I'll do that. I'll do that. What else we got? I had an eel I lost. I had an eel I lost living in my sump for months. Damn, you didn't clean that sun for no months, huh? Yeah, and they're living. Oh, Arowana's are overrated. Man, hell no. Nah. Hell no. Nah. Hell no. Nah. Hell no, nah, man. Um, I don't know, man. Uh, you know, I, I respect your opinion, but after having my Arowana's, man, it is it's it's a lot of it's a lot of joy with with feeding them. It's a lot of joy watching them. You know, top water predators, you know what I'm saying? So graceful, you know, swimming along the top. You know what I mean? Like, I like an ecosystem, right? I like my aquariums. I want to enjoy my, my aquariums in entirety. That means I want a top swimmer. That means I want a middle column swimmer. And that means I want a bottom swimmer. So that means I want catfish on the bottom, plecos on the bottom. I want a middle column swimmer, whether it be Oscars, Midas, you know, jaguar, whatever kind of cichlids. And then you get you a nice fish up top. Arowana is top dog. Giardini, top dog. You know, then you could get the African pikes. You get a pink tail chalcius. You could get these gar, different kind of stuff like that. But Arowanas are so far from overrated, man, especially Kobe, man. Kobe is a fool. Hand feed, hand feed Kobe. Well, I ain't hand feeding him because he bit me. He fucking, 
every time I try to hand feed him, he make me bleed. But Tong Fee, Kobe, he jumps out the water. That's why he got the name Kobe, because he jumps out the water to grab the food like a pit bull. So, you know, yeah. You got to step your game up. You got to step your game up, DV98. Man, you don't even know right now, man. What's my favorite tank? Dean asked me, what's my favorite tank? I can't choose. I got so many tanks that I enjoy. You know, when you keep all the fish that you love to keep, you know, you really can't pick a favorite. Um, I like each each tank for it is for a specific reason, for a different reason. You know, the 225, I enjoy feeding it. I got the stingrays in there. I got the stingray. I got the eels in there. I enjoy my 800-gallon pond because of Kobe. You know, I enjoy my 225 because I got the other Jardini, I got the Jardini and the Albino Silver Arowana in there. You know, I love feeding my African Sickle tank. I even like feeding my discus tank. You know, I even like feeding those guys. So it's hard to pick. And appreciate it, man. Thank you for stopping through, man. Have a good night. You don't have TikTok. Okay, 24 Afri. All right. I don't know. I don't know. I'll try to do a feeding video soon. I try to matter of fact, man, you just missed all of those feeding videos I just dropped. I just dropped a feeding video on the 225 on the 800 gallon, the 225 salt water. Did you miss all those videos? I just did three different feeding videos. Just did three. Brandon Mana, do I have any bat noise? No, I do not. No, I do not. Are you a 24 Afro? Am I against collaboration with another YouTuber? In what way? No, I'm not. No, I'm not against doing it. Um, you know, only only person that's locally out here is um uh, is Mel, Hawaiian Fish Keeper. And uh we haven't collaborated, but as far as uh, you know, I've been on some lives, you know. I mean, you know, I did a live with Garcia Aquatics. I don't know if y'all probably didn't catch that, but um, I did a live with Garcia Aquatics. I'm supposed to be doing a live at some point with Mike Loves Life Aquatics, you know. So I'm not against doing any collaborations with any YouTuber, but I don't like I don't like I don't like the fake shit. You know what I'm saying? I don't like that fake love. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, if you fuck with me, if we, you know, if we like how some like some of y'all, you know, the way we talk, the way we interact, the way we get down, you know what I'm saying? If y'all was a YouTuber, you know, or y'all was on YouTube videos, I would collaborate with y'all a lot faster because you know we. You know, we get to it. You get what I'm saying? But I'm not about to just, you know, anybody to say, hey, let's do a live. You know, you don't like none of my videos. You don't support the channel. I don't see you in the chat. You know, I'm not about to do it. I'm not about to get down with you. Like, we not, we ain't got nothing to talk about. You know what I'm saying? So that's how I feel about it. But uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Cody says, I had my first air one when I was 10. Also worked in a fish trade since then. Had a lot of nice fish. Yeah, yeah. I didn't. You got man. You had everyone at ten. Okay. You were showing off for your friends then. You were showing off for your friends. And as I keep on seeing the the people in the comment, I mean the people in the uh, the room kind of fluctuate up and down. If y'all haven't hit that like button, hit the like button for me one time. I see we got forty nine likes. You know, forty nine likes, twenty five in the chat. You know, if y'all haven't hit the like button, go ahead and hit that. But back to Cody. Yeah, you had Erewhon at 10. You were showing off. You were showing off. Erewhonas are amazing. Mr. Pooh, he was good until I took the black belt out and I woke up. The minus was, the minus up Texas was the tank boss until now. And nobody messed with the Erewhona. Yeah, I mean, it, it changes up just like that. You know, it changes up just like that. You remove one fish. And then all of a sudden, you know, they got to change hierarchy. You know, they challenge each other and they reestablish that hierarchy. So that happens a lot. So, you know, now you just got to remove that Midas. You don't have a choice. What's your pond dimensions? Ours is seven foot by four foot, two and a half foot. Um, I don't recall. I don't recall. I just know that it's, I just know that's 800 gallon. I don't recall, but I know that that's not big enough. Mine. But yeah, you saying Boss Aquatics? Um, yeah, maybe one day. Yeah, maybe one day me and bro could do something. You know, he's out he's out in Chicago, so it ain't it ain't it's not a lot that we could do. But um yeah, maybe one day. Maybe one day. Yeah. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. Robert Manning, 50. 50 what, bruh? 50 what, man? Oh, now we have 52. You talking about the you talking about the likes? Yeah, we have 52 now, man. I appreciate y'all for liking. Y'all coming in the room. Make sure y'all hit, make sure y'all hitting that like button for me one time. But yeah, the original question, and a lot of us already got to it, was how do you keep the passion within the hobby? What do y'all do? Do y'all just buy the fish? Y'all get a bigger tank? Y'all switch it up from fresh water to salt water, salt water to fresh. What do y'all do? What, what do y'all do to make sure that you don't that the hobby don't get stale? Because if it, and who is it getting stale for any of y'all? Are y'all feeling like it's getting a little boring? That's what I'm talking about. You making a TikTok? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. That's what's up. Do that. Do that. Like I said, it's so much easier with these lives, man. That's the only thing. You know what I mean? That's the only thing. I mean, the only thing I could do is if we had a tank back there, I could do it. I could go work out right now. But, you know, that's about it. Can't really do anything else. But Kenneth says start five tanks at the same time. Damn. Started five tanks at the same time. Okay. Yeah, that's that's one way. You definitely can't get bored. <laughs> you definitely can't get bored when you're starting off five at one time. Setting them up different. You know, that's going to be a little. Trizelle, man, what's going on with you, man? How you doing? What's good with you? Thank you for sliding through. I appreciate you. But, yeah. Yeah, this hobby is this hobby is amazing, man. We need to get more people, you know, involved in the hobby. We need to get more people, you know, keeping these fish the right way. You know what I'm saying? How many people do you see still buying goldfish, throwing them into a little bowl? It was a viral video. It was a viral video. I can't tell you who it was. I hate if she was here, she'd be able to tell you. But it was a viral video of a female buying two orianda or oranda goldfish and just throwing them inside the bowl and it just went viral the video you know what i'm saying like why are we still putting goldfish inside of these little bowls why aren't we having these goldfish inside of the proper tanks tanks with filters big tanks because they get big why are we still buying these damn bettas and throwing these bettas inside of these little bowls and putting them on the kitchen table? You know what I'm saying? If you see anybody doing this, please educate them. Please let them know that's not the proper way of keeping these fish. Help them understand the difference between thriving and surviving. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like more people will stay in the hobby a lot longer because if they don't have any understanding and they're doing it incorrect and these fish die, they just think that the fish die. You know what I'm saying? They don't even want to give the fish a chance because they did it wrong from the start. So, you know, as fish hobbyists, we do have uh, a duty to make sure that, you know, that we help someone that's doing it the wrong way. You know what I mean? Personal, I was I was out the hobby for the best of five, four to five years and just started back last summer for the sole purpose of keeping the first pie bought alive but then i saw the extra tanks we had in storage okay well I'm, I'm damn glad that you that you got back in it i'm damn glad you got back in it and starting off with that pine that's one hell of a way to start that's one hell of a way to start evo 98 i'm not an expert or advanced in fish keeping but i enjoy seeing the different fish and learning about it also i plan on getting an aquarium in the future I really hope that happens for you. And thank you for your honesty. Really appreciate that. Really appreciate that. I've been in a hobby for 30 years. And uh, I've learned more in the last four to five years than I did the first 25, 26 years. You know what I mean? Um, this hobby is ever changing. We get more information online. We're learning more about these animals. And with social media, with platforms like this, we're able to talk and actually, you know, converse with people that, you know, are very well experienced with some of these things. So, you know, I'm, I'm still learning. 
I'm still learning, you know, and that's why I say this is the, one of the best hobbies out there, most fulfilling. Because Cody Miller said, because the big box stores don't educate the newer people in the hobby and it's causing a negative impact on people that really are interested in the hobby. I agree. I agree. That's why on this platform, I try my best to help people learn from my successes and my mistakes. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm going to make mistakes 100%. We all do, you know, but I'm also going to do some things right, you know. So I just want to make sure that I'm able to provide, you know, both sides to someone, you know, and treat my information like a T bone steak. You know, you eat the meat, but you don't eat the bone, right? So some of this is useful. Whatever is not, throw that shit away. Don't worry about it. Um, but that's how I treat it. You know what I mean? If someone's if someone asks me a question, even in the comments, I know y'all notice. If someone asks me a question, I try my best to answer that question in full. You know, I don't like to just be like, oh, thanks. I don't know. Yeah. You know, blah, blah, blah. I try to really break it down for y'all. I really try my best to make sure that I answer it honestly and thoroughly. You know what I mean? That's why I started doing the little short video clips. You know what I mean? Because I feel like it was a better way of engagement, better way of understanding. And then you actually get to hear it instead of just reading it. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Yeah. But that's how much I love this hobby. All right. Devo 98, I've had experience with little guppies and such. Nothing big. Guppies are cool, though. That's how, you know, that's how I started off with some guppies. You know, my grandma had the guppies, like I said a minute ago. Um, the thing about guppies, do you know how to, do you know how to sex guppies? You can tell the, the difference between the sex. You know, guppies breed like, like mosquitoes, man. They breed like rabbits. They breed like, I say mosquitoes because y'all know mosquitoes, all they need is a, is a, is a water source. And they, you know, they going to do their thing. Uh, Mr. Pooh, I do it with my son. We have some tanks to change. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Just say I call myself the king of Mbunas. Yes, sir. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mbunas are Mbunas are cool. Mbunas are cool, man. What do you think about Trophius? You have you like the Du Boisy. I like the I like the blue face. I like the blue face uh, Trophius. But yeah, Mbunas are cool. I wanted to set up an Mbuna tank. I did, but I feel like now I'm getting to the point to where I just want to allow my fish to have the biggest space possible. Like I have 26 tanks up and running, 26, and I don't really need all of those tanks. You know what I'm saying? I don't need all those tanks. So I'm going to leave some of those open for quarantine at all times. And I'm just going to focus on the bigger aquariums. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to focus so much on having all these small ass tanks. And the other fish room is different. I got the guppy. I got the um, the bed is in there, et cetera. But in this fish room right here, I'm going to focus more on the big aquariums. The 225, the 150, you know, the, uh, the 240, the big pond. But like the 60 down below has a tiger fish. But the other 60 long... You know, not really stressing off putting any more fish in anytime soon. The the 29 gallon on the bottom, not worrying about that. The 20 gallon, not worrying about that. Yeah. Mr. Pooh, you got the goldfish crew. Okay, okay, okay. Anthony Gibson, I love the realistic trial and error method you use. It's really, really now. I appreciate that. I appreciate what. I don't really think I do the trial and error, but, you know, um, I definitely try things that other people haven't tried. Uh, you know, the channel is kind of like based off that, you know, showing people how, you know, they say something is impossible. Well, on my channel, you know, you see that impossible is possible. You know, you are, you know, the OGs remember all the haters that used to talk all that shit about, you know, how the dovi can't be with any other fish is going to kill everything. You know, my dovi died just recently, but. You know, five years later, it always had tank mates. You know, you hear people say, oh, the buddy car fry can't be with anything. It's going to kill everything, blah, 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 blah. I got two buddy car fry together. And they still inside the pond with all of these other fish. Not killing shit. You know what I'm saying? So it's really about enjoying the hobby and trying things out for yourself. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to listen to somebody else, listen to the naysayers, listen to other people, you know, put their 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 um 
their insecurities and their failures and their, um, you know, don't allow someone else to be scared for you. You know what I'm saying? Like they try to make you feel like how they feel. You know what I'm saying? I don't want you to do what I'm doing because I'm telling you to do it. All I want you to do is just do what you want to do. You know what I'm saying? If this is something that you want to do, do it. I want you to do it. You know what I mean? Like I like I don't believe that my way is the only way. I know it's not. You know, the way I do things may not be the way that, you know, 80, 90 percent of the people do things. But uh, if if it's working for me, it could possibly work for you. You know, a lot of people, they would never probably do a saltwater tank with a sponge filter. I showed y'all that you could have a saltwater tank with a sponge filter. You know, people say you can't put the hang on a back filter to the, uh, for the saltwater tank. I'm running corals on a, with the hang on a back filter. You know what I'm saying? You know, um, I'm running saltwater tanks, no refugium, sumps. Above the tank, DIY sumps at that. You know, been running for it for over a year. Fish healthy, everybody doing good. So it's not, so it's just about trying things out for yourself. Enjoying the hobby is most important. And, you know, that's really what it's about. In my opinion, in my opinion, you know what I mean? Shit, we are, those, these are all our individual tanks. You know what I'm saying? You could only take someone's information, you could only take someone's opinion so far. But you got to do it, you got to do it for yourself. You got to enjoy it, you know? Just enjoy this shit, you know what I'm saying? All right, where we at? Where we at? I done, done started rambling. All right. All right. All right. Halo, what's going on? What's up? What's up? I've been enjoying your videos. New subscriber. I appreciate you. Thank you so much for the subscribe. I remember my silver arrow bought it from Walmart. Damn. I didn't even know that Walmart had. Well, shit, a long time ago. I never even knew Walmart had arowanas. Yeah. When they were $10 for a three inch, still had the yolk sack. Wow. I've never even seen an arowana with a yolk sack. That was a that was a that was a comment pack full of information right there. And you had it for eight years. Damn. So you were in, so you were in New Orleans. Damn. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You lost it during Hurricane Katrina. Man, sorry to hear that, man. Sorry to hear that. And he was 30 to 31 inches. What size tank did you have him in? What you have him in? But yeah, you know, Kobe's like 30 inches. Man, that's the biggest fish I've ever had. And Antoine, hey, I'm a sack too. I breed Tanganyikans. If you ever want some shell dwellers for that white rock, white rack, let me know. I'd love to get you some. It's all good. It's all good. Shout out to my sack, homie. What's good, man? What's good? I appreciate that. I appreciate the love. All right. Originally, Cody, originally when I started fish keeping, me and my dad had millions of peacock cichlids. If you can name it, we had it. And it's just and, and it just got to overwhelming, overwhelming to handle. So that's why we stopped. Couldn't get rid of them. Yeah, I know how to, I know the feeling. <laughs> I found that out with these uh with these fry, man. I, I found that out with the fry. But Peacock, peacocks are fortunately some of the most beautiful African cichlids. But yeah, I definitely understand that. Rich bass, every day I come home from work and I get to chill and feed the fish and forget about the day. That's why I love this hobby. Yes, sir. That's right. That's right. That's what it's meant for. It's meant to decompress, make you forget about the stress, you know? Antoine, that's what I meant. I like that you set your own boundaries and you do your own experiments. I appreciate that. Yeah, I, 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 I didn't take it the wrong way. I appreciate that. Social media is bio. Yep. Thank you. My Dova has tank mates. Also learned that there. Learned that here. And I've been doing this for 35 years. Yeah. You know, man. The dovi is a fish that got me started in this hobby, y'all. The dovi, and I started. Correction. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me explain that. I started in this hobby thirty years ago. I was ten. Obviously, a ten year old don't qualify as you know when I got back in it. Thirteen, you know now what? Shit. Twelve, thirteen years. About twelve years ago, I started back. The fish that brought me back to the hobby 
was an 18 inch dovine. I went to my, I went to the local fish store, had a dovine there about this big, had it in a small tank, obviously, because, you know, it was a donation. So didn't even know what the, what the hell a cichlid was. Didn't even know what a cichlid was. And, um, but I knew I wanted that fish. You know, I walked past the tank. I put my hand next to the tank. You know how people do. Put your hand next to the tank. Man, this thing's trying to bite my hand. You know, teeth like little puppy teeth, thrashing about, you know, knocking a heater around, knocking a um, filter head around. I'm like, oh, I want that fish. Didn't even know that they got like that. Oh, I want that fish. Long story short, found out I couldn't have that fish. You know, um, the first tank I bought, put a little, put a hold on that fish, 50 bucks. First thing I bought was a 75 gallon. Started doing my research, realized that I couldn't keep that fish. Um, then when I was doing my research, I'm researching um, guapatel male. You know, some of y'all might know real dovi fish keepers. Y'all know who guapatel male is. Um, and some other ones, you know, Andy Woods, um, King and Queen Cichlids. It was a few people that I used as a source of information about what the dovi is, the tank mates compatibility, um, the aggression level, all of this stuff. Everybody's saying you can't keep this fish with nothing. It's going to kill everything. It got to be in a thousand gallon by itself, a 600 gallon by itself, all these different things. Come to find out, they're wrong. They're wrong. You know, you could keep a dovi with other fish successfully. You know, red devil. How many people have y'all, if y'all talk in the chat, Oh, don't put that with nothing else. It's going to kill everything. No, it's not. No, it's not. What you got to do is you got to learn the aggression level compatibility. You have to learn the size of these fish as well. You got to make sure that when you have a super aggressive fish, whether it's a dovi or red devil or jaguar or whatever, you know, but he for ride, you got to make sure that you put fish of equal size, equal aggression, and you make sure that the major aggressor is outnumbered by fish of the same aggression, similar size. And it works every time. I do it time and time again. You get what I'm saying? And it's about learning that. And that's what I've learned, you know, from keeping the dovi. And I did end up getting a dovi, you know, 12 years ago. I just got a six inch. I couldn't get that one. I got a six inch one, you know. And then I also, at that same time, I bought the Red Devil. I bought the Buddy Coffery. And then later on, I got the Green Terror, you know? So I had those fish all in the tank together. Totally fine. And ever since that time, I've always kept Dovi with other fish. It doesn't matter what size. Small, big, it doesn't matter. I don't care if you have a 20-inch Dovi. If you put fish in there of similar size, it's, gonna, it's not going to attack and kill those fish. I don't care what anybody tell you. I see all type of different YouTubers now keeping Dovi with other fish. And they're max size. They're maxed out 20, 20 plus inches. Still got them in there with, with, with iridescent sharks, with Paku, with catfish and things like that. Yeah, I don't really want to keep those kind of fish. But again, they still are keeping them with those kind of fish. Me, I would have them in there with Big Buddy Coffery, Arowana. Um, you know, um, red devils. I would have a bunch of different Midas cichlids in there with them. And it works. And it works. And you can keep doing it time and time again. But when you put something like a Dovi with Oscars, it's not going to happen. You put it with a, with a green tear. Come on now. What are you doing? Salvini, what are you doing? You know what I'm saying? So it's like, you know, when you're doing that kind of silly, you know, silliness, you know, the outcome is not going to be favorable for you. That's just what I've learned after keeping Dovi for 12 years. And again, that was always my favorite fish. That's why I be so passionate when I'm talking about, you know, the Dovi cichlid. But let me see. See, people used to say you can't put South American and African cichlids together, but I can tell you that it didn't make any difference in the tank. Cody, I agree with you. I agree with you. Um, it's, it is frowned upon in a hobby. People feel like that it got to be a species-only aquarium, whether it's African cichlids. It got to be all African cichlids, and you can't put the centrals and the African cichlids together. You can't. Um, the Buddy Coffry is an African cichlid. Technically, you know, it's in there with, 
you know, Central American cichlids, you know, African pike. You definitely can. Reezy, you got sponge filters and hang on a bag filters for your for my quarantine tank. That's a good, that's a good quarantine tank. That's a good quarantine tank. I got sponge filters on my 225 with my with my Air One Android D. Somebody just asked me what filtration do I have on a tank with those big fish that I got in there? Sponge filters. Did y'all who, who would have thought? I wouldn't have thought this. Who would have thought that you could have sponge filters on a 225 gallon aquarium with a 16 inch Airwana Giardini, big 12 inch poly Oscar, giant garami, you know what I'm saying? Peacock bass, sponge filters. Sponge filters. I would never have believed that. A few years ago, I would have just known that I needed two FX6 filters on that tank. So that's why I say, like, it's just about, you know, having these kind of conversations, you know, when learning. And that's why I try my best to make sure that I tell you the things that I've learned, you know, and then allow you to decide for yourself what you want to take from it. You know, that's 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 really the reason why I do this, y'all. And if y'all if y'all haven't hit that like button, please hit that like button for me one time. All right, all right. Where we at? Where we at? Frankie Banta, I just picked up a stormy catfish. Looks like a shark. It's about eight inches now and gets to about 15 to 16 inches. I know one would look good in your arowana tank. Let me see what a stormy catfish look like. I do love catfish too. I do love catfish. Let's see, stormy catfish. Storm, come on now. Let's go. Where are we at? Stormy catfish. What? Um, nothing. Are we talking about this? Are we talking about this right here? Hold on. I'm going to show everybody the picture. I don't know about this one, man. Um, are we talking about we talking about that? It's just coming up as a a point. Oh, shit. Yeah, I guess that's what you're talking about. I guess that's what you're talking about. Hmm. Yeah, it looks it looks uh looks a little looks a little plain. Looks a little plain. Just one solid color. All right, BZ Aquatics, much respect, bro. I have built a channel watching guys like you and IFG. I appreciate that. I appreciate that, man. Yeah, man. The hobby, man. We miss IFG, man. You know, IFG is doing some other content. IFG is doing some other content. Did you know that? BZ, I know he probably don't want to, you know, he doesn't show his face, but, you know, I, we, we know his voice. We know his voice. We know IFG when we hear, when we hear IFG. So let me um, put you on to IFG's new, new, uh, new channel. He, it's doing pretty good. He got more subs than me. So check this out, bro. Check this out. I'm going to put you on IFG. That's IFG right there. That's what he's doing. Let me show you. He's doing this kind of content, bro. 504 Street Stories Unplugged. Now you might just you might think I'm 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 jawsing, but I'm not. Just click on a video. You're gonna be like, that's that's his voice. That's him. So yeah, so you know, I sub. I know I sub to that. As you can see, <laughs> you know, I'm subscribed, you know. You know, I I, I fuck I fucks with um with IFG. You know, he wasn't doing, you know, I guess he wasn't doing the numbers that he wanted to do over here with the fish stuff. So, got rid of all of his tanks and, you know, kept it moving. Respect. All right. Brandon Mon, I like how you did the boat of tank for the turtles. Thank you. Appreciate that. Mr. Pooh, it helps set, the help set up tanks. Just your standard feeder goldfish. I lie at five to six inches. 
Rebake down and set up different tanks. Okay, okay. Stephen Banks, what do I do for a living? I, uh, I'm a contractor. So, uh, Stephen, ba Stephen Banks, so I'm a contractor, man. I do everything from painting, landscaping, flooring, moving, regular handyman stuff, some electrical um, shit, man. I, I, do, I do a number of different things. I also got my painting business. So, um, you know, but I'm tired, tired of doing this, man. I've been doing this now for 13 years. I've been doing it for 13 years. I thought my oldest son would have taken over. You know what I'm saying? My oldest son is about to be 22. You know, he'll be 22 this June. So I thought that he was going to, you know, take the reins, man. You know, shit, I'm about to sit back, you know, dad getting older. You know what I mean? Like, you know, I pay you, you go hook up your, your little partners and shit. You know what I'm saying? Y'all go work and get to it. That's what I thought was going to happen. But, you know, kids have their own plans, have their own agenda. It is what it is. So, shit, I'm still doing everything. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. But and then I still do the YouTube channel. But that's, uh, that's what I do. Cody Miller, when you research about a fish, what questions would you look up if you was talking to someone new in the hobby? When you, let me read. Let me reread that. When you research about a fish, what questions would you look up? I would start off looking up. Um, the first thing I look up about a fish, I type in a fish, and then I look at the size. Um, I look up the um, the tank mates. I look up the diet. I look at the parameters. You know what I'm saying? Like those are the first questions that I'm gonna look up when I see any fish. Just like when somebody just mentioned a fish. You know, I'm gonna look up. I'm gonna look, I look it up. See what pops up. Let's just try it out. Let's just say, give me a fish. Give me a fish, Cody. Give me a fish that you um that you that you would that you would have me look up, and I'm gonna, and I'm gonna look it up with y'all. Largemouth bass eat sunfish, but in our pond, the bass gets bullied by a four-inch sunfish. You never know something until you try it. Well, sun, well, yeah, sunfish. Sunfish are almost like bluegill. Yeah, exactly though. But you never know. You never know until you try it. That's a fact. Uh, what else? We got Halo, Cleveland, no enemies for your for your clowns. No, um, Halo, no, no enemies, no enemies. Um, I'm not putting corals in that's in the seventy five gallon. I'm not putting corals in there. I'll probably, you know, put corals. Well, I got corals in the 20 gallon. When I when I change that to the 37 gallon, I still don't think I'm gonna put any anemones. I think the tank too small. But um, yeah, no corals in the 75, no corals in the house. I don't think I'm gonna put any corals in the house. Might just leave them in the garage. Cody Miller, we have a pool filter on our pond and run three 75 gallon sponge filters as we're running front and it's been running fine for a year now. Exactly. Exactly. I don't know what's up with the pool filter. It might be uh might be real big, but yeah. But exactly though, man. I'm running the trash can, the 44 gallon trash can filter I built with some of y'all. I'm running that on the 800 gallon. I'm running that on the 800 gallon. That and shit. That's it. That's it. The plants help. You know what I'm saying? I I seen that you got the plant in there. The plants help. And um, yeah. That's it. It's it's amazing, right? Yeah, you don't need all that high tech stuff. I mean, it's cool if you want to spend the money on it. Cool, but I'm all about making this possible for anybody, affordable for anybody. And I hate spending money, and then I feel like I'm wasting money. Like when I bought those FX6 filters, I was a big fan. I was always talking about how FX, you know, flew all this, flew all that FX filter, FX filter. I was pissed. When those, when those motors just kept breaking on me. And then it's like $120 to replace them. I was pissed. So that's why I got about five of them in storage. And then I'm still running a couple of them. But to me, that's just a waste. You know what I'm saying? When you do a DIY filter, if you're if if you're if you're, uh, pump go bad, go buy another pump for like 50 bucks. 50 bucks, you get a whole new pump filter working again. So that's why I started doing my DIY filters because I got tired of having that happen. And spending a hundred dollars per filter, you know what I mean? Yeah. All right, where we at? Where we at? 
Dago Berto Sanchez, do I have two return pumps on DIY filters? Um, no, no, I have the one. I have the one. Have the one return. Ryan, I love the FX6s, but they're basically a high powered large sponge filter with some compartments for the biomedia. Exactly, Ryan. That's that's exactly it. One big sponge filter that you're paying, especially FX6, you're paying almost $400 for. $400 for this filter. Big sponge filter. And then, like you said, those small little baskets, like, man, when you have a trash can sump or um, a tote for above the tank sump, you could load that up with as much media as you want. And the media is cheap. You get the bio blocks. You can get you a box for like $43. And I mean, you get a whole bunch in there. And you could buy a couple of those. And then as far as the mechanical media, like the sponge or the filter floss, you just, I buy the cheap $5. Well, now it's like $7. Cheap $7 pillows from Walmart, Target, wherever. You can just throw that shit away. You don't even have to, re you don't even have to clean it. You don't, don't even waste the water. Just throw it away and keep loading it up. $7 and you get all of that. Now, if you want to go buy a bag of filter floss from like PetSmart Petco, they sell you a one bag and you probably get like, you know what I'm saying? And you probably spend like $10, $12. I'm buying two pillows. I'm buying two pillows and that's going to last me, man, two pillows probably last me, honestly, y'all, about a year for $12, $13, about a year. You know what I'm saying? That's what I try to show. That if y'all if y'all don't like that, if y'all don't like those numbers, cool. If you want to go in, cool. But I'm just saying, like, it gets real simple, real easy, you know, when you start building this stuff yourself. Before I started building my aquarium stands, you know, I bought the 125s, you know, from PetSmart, stand, tank, all that right there. You know what I'm saying? Stands start falling apart. It's still, when I moved in, it was still cool. I had to beef up the bottom of it. But you know what I'm saying? A little bit of water get on the bottom of it. It's particle board. Start soaking up that water. Start losing its integrity. When I start building my stands, and you could build you an aquarium stand for probably, man, you could probably build you a stand for like $300. You know what I'm saying? That is wood, plywood, screws, you know, whatever else you need. You know what I'm saying? Some paint. You know what I'm saying? And you could build it to the point to where it could hold three times or four times the weight of your aquarium volume when it's full. You know what I'm saying? Not just, you know, it being able to hold 125 gallons with the water in there. It's going to hold four times that. You get what I'm saying? So start trying to do stuff. Learn how to do this stuff on your own. Learn how to DIY some of this stuff. And stop giving these big box companies y'all money. Don't give them your money like that. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. That's what the channel is about. That's all I'm saying. Y'all already know. The OGs know what's up. Y'all know why I do this shit. So, yeah. All right. Exotic Aquarium. Antoine, Exotic Aquarium finna be back open here shortly. You ever used to hit Exotic when it was back over off? Man, Antoine, where do you think I got the 240 from, bro? You feel me? I got the 240 from there. I got both my 225s from there. I used to get all of my saltwater fish from there. My saltwater fish. I used to get some of the court. Like, man, yeah. Yeah, man. That was my favorite spot. That was my go-to. That was my go-to, man. I was mad when that shit caught fire and they and they closed down. And they kept on saying, we're going to open up in June. Shit. We're going to open up in such and such. Shit. You know what I'm saying? I can't wait for them to open back up. That was the biggest distributor that I knew of. Biggest store. And they had the biggest aquariums. Man. Yeah, I fucks with exotic. I'm waiting for them to open back up. I don't really like splash like that. You know what I'm saying? Matter of fact, and then on top of the fact, shit, they right down the street from me. They about a about a what? Like a 10 minute drive from me. So yeah, I'm right there. But yeah, where we at? Where we at? Where Mr. Pooh, Andy Woods did it. Andy, uh, yeah, Andy Woods, man. Andy Woods, man. Yeah, yeah. I used to I used to fool with Andy Woods. I'm over here talking so much, I, can, I, I can't even remember what um, we were talking about. Oh, yeah, 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 BZ, you was talking about, you didn't know that. 
Yeah, man, it's all good. It's all good. Like I said, when you chat, when you tap on, when you tap on this video, you're gonna be like, "That's IFG right there." And then you say, "Andy Wood, the sponge filters, Mister Pooh." Yep, yep, yep. JJ Revere, when do I rest? Shit, what's that? <laughs> what's that? What's that, man? No, I rest. You know what I'm saying. But whenever I rest, it's not a good rest because I know that I'm I'm slacking on something. You know what I'm saying? Like, literally from sun up to sundown, it's it's definitely something I could be doing. Like right now, if I wasn't doing this with y'all, you know what I mean. I have you know I definitely got to spend time with the family. But if I wasn't spending time with the family, I got a bunch of tanks that need to be clean. Right now, I got the 75 gallon in the house that need to be clean. I got the 125 saltwater tank that need to be clean. The 225 saltwater tank that need to be clean. The um um uh, uh, um the brackish tank that need to be clean. The 225 fresh that need to be clean. Um, the 37 gallon need to be clean. The flower horn tank that need to be clean. And when I say clean, the water is still sparkling. It's crystal clear, but I know how long it's been since I did my last water change. You know what I'm saying? Like I try to stay on it. I don't want my fish to look sick and then I do my water change. I want to be on top of that. So it's just a lot of work on top of the fact the room don't look the way I want it to look. You know what I'm saying? It's it's always something. It's always something that needs to be done that could be done. Cody, Jaguar Cichlid for a community tank? Yeah. Yeah, Cody. Yeah, you didn't know. I know you you playing. You I know you know that you can have Jaguar Cichlids in a community tank. I know you know that. And you say the C1000 pool filter. I'm going to look I'm going to look that up. Cody Miller do a DIY trash can filter breakdown video. I did. I did actually when I first moved in and I set the um trash can sump up on the um the uh, 800 gallon I did a video on that. I'm about to do another trash can sump for that pond outside. I'm about to do a 44 gallon trash can. Is it 44? Or am I doing a 20? I might be doing, I might be doing a 20. No, it's really bigger than a 20. I'm doing a trash can sump on the DI on the uh, DIY pond in the front. So I'll do it. So I'll make sure I record that. All right. Uh plug on filter floss for sure. The, the um the pillow. Trizel, do I watch Boss Aquariums? It's Boss, he it's actually called Boss Aquatics. Um and I used to watch Boss Aquatics, um, but, you know, I used to watch Boss Aquatics. Antoine South Sac, Iraq, man, we right, we damn near neighbors. We damn near neighbors, man. I'm all, I'm all flooring. Yeah, we right, we right, we right next to each other, man, for sure. Um, Jay Rivera, there goes some new sponge, <laughs> some new sponsors. Appreciate you. Yeah, man, I appreciate y'all. All right. They really, really about to be open in the, in the next month, for real. I hope they are though. Yeah, I hope I hope I hope Exotic is open in the next month, man. They've been closed for a minute. You know they own that building, right? If they didn't own that building, for sure they would have had to get rid of that spot because they've been closed for a couple years. You know what I mean? Like you're not about to be just paying on a location. You know what I mean? And you don't and you 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 not occupying it. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. Can we get an update on the 75 gallon tank in the living room, Daniel? Yeah, you could get an update on that. Yeah, you could get an update on that. When was the last time I did an update on that aquarium? I'll turn that into a whole video. It's just sometimes, man, like, you know, what, what some people want to see, another person don't. So let me see when the last time was that I did a video on a 75 gallon in the house. I know it's been a minute. Let's see where we at. Oh, shit. Yeah. Did you miss this video right here when I did the little cleaning a month ago? Let me show you. Yeah, a month ago, I did a cleaning on that thing. You still want an update? I can still do an update. Man, look how many videos I done posted. Y'all, I done posted 777 videos. That's not shorts. 777 videos, man. That's... That's a lot. That's a lot, y'all. But yeah, walk outside now. Cody, we gonna make a TikTok and do a 24-7 live stream of the tanks. 
or some could use some extra pocket change. <laughs> hey, we all could use some extra some extra pocket change, man. Like I tell people all the time, you know, the little bit of money I make off these YouTube videos don't even pay the electric bill. But again, you know, like I gotta say, I'm doing this because I because because I love a hobby. I mean, I wouldn't mind getting paid for it, but I still do this because I love a hobby. Thank you, Antoine. I appreciate that. Yeah, that's a fact. That's a fact. That's a fact, man. Whether 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 shit is going bad or not, you know, I'm gonna still come through with the content even when I get too busy. I'm gonna still come back. I'm trying to be more active on this. I'm trying to really get to that 20k, man. It's been hard. It's been hard, man. I've been trying to get to 20k since July of last year. It's been almost a year. But um, uh, you know, it is what it is, man. You know, we appreciate things when we got to work for it, right? You know, if we was if it was easy, everybody would do it. If it was easy, wouldn't respect it, wouldn't appreciate it. And uh, so I've always loved hard work, you know. So this is hard work. It's hard work, man. It's not easy. <laughs> you be fried. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good, Cody. Don't even sweat it, man. It's all good. It's all good, man. Y'all, your questions be making sense, man. It's all it's all good, man. Man, come to the come to the uh, society meets. I've been wanting to. I've been wanting to, man. I've been wanting to. I've been wanting to get into the uh, Sacramento Aquarian Society, man. I really have. I really have. I, I think I should. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Shit, man. Matter of fact, yeah, you told me that last time. Then we just meet at uh we just we just met over there at um aquarium domain, right? That's one. Yeah, man. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna slide through, man. I'm gonna slide through. Okay, okay, yeah. Now, now, hey, now, now it's really connecting, man. Now it's really connecting, bro. Yeah, 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 yeah. We been, we locked in, man. We locked in, man. For sure, we definitely gotta uh, put something together, man. You ever thought about doing YouTube? Yeah, man. We neighbors like a motherfucker, bud. Like, yeah, we good, we good, we good, man. I'm gonna slide, I'm gonna slide to one of those though, for sure. That's a fact, man. I'm gonna definitely slide to one of those. Uh, when we put it on in the fin big zoom, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. What's good with the shark? He's cool. He's cool. He's looking like how he's been looking. He ain't ate. He ain't ate since he ate inside that container. Um, I just went to. Yeah, yeah. And's and gonna know about this. I just slid to a uh, splash aquarium. I bought uh the chunky the chunky frozen food diet, and then I also went to. Um, Ranch 99, and I picked up some squid. And, uh, you know, because I'm not, I'm not buying no sea urchins. I'm not buying no live sea urchins to be feeding to this shark. And uh, they recommended, you know, silver size, squid, octopus, you know, the usual, right? Online it says that the sharks like to eat crab and sea urchins. But the pet store was feeding, feeding this particular horn shark he was, he was, they were feeding him silver sides. So I know this thing eats silver sides. And we seen him eat the silver sides inside the container when I was acclimating him. But when I tried to feed him on live two days ago, he spit the silver side out. So I'm going to try, I'm going to try this. I'm going to try the, uh, the chunky first. If that don't work, I'm going to cut up some squid, try to feed him some of that squid. And uh, we're going to see how that works. We're going to see how that works. Sometimes y'all know it takes a little minute for the fish to eat, you know, a shark or whatever the case may be. It takes a little time for him to get hungry enough to say, all right, I'm going to eat this. Like this obviously food. I got to eat this because I'm not getting nothing else. So, you know, he we got vitamins for him. You know what I mean? So he's going to get his vitamins once he start eating. So just hopefully, you know, he start eating. I'm, that's what I'm waiting on. I can't wait to show y'all a video of him eating. Cody Miller, I need someone I can buy fish from cheap. I need a fish eater. Yeah, I got an addiction. 
man, I need some cheap fish too, man. It's hard to come by. And I'm busy. I got the babies. And I'm an electrician, but I'm preaching to the choir with, you know, my wife be telling me to start filming. I got 10 tanks, all tanking, eating hundreds of gallons are my biggest. Yeah, man. Yeah. Hey, hey, Aunt, man. Um, You know, I'm glad to hear you're an electrician because, you know, I might, I might need you, man. I might need you, man. I've been wanting to upgrade my panel from 100 gallons to two. I mean, from 100 amp to 200 amp. I know it. I know it gets a little pricey. But I'm I'm glad I'm glad I'm glad we I'm glad we locked in, man. I'm glad we locked in, man. We gonna definitely put something together, man. I, you know, I do a lot of different work, so uh, you know, shit. Some of the jobs that I get are electrical jobs, so shit, man. You know, if you're available, you know, man, we gonna we gonna we gonna we gonna tap in, man. We gonna we gonna put something together for sure. You my neighbor already, so you know, we definitely gotta make something happen. Yeah. Yeah, Mr. Pooh, I'm almost there to that 20K. That's a fact, man. That's a fact, man. You know, after I get this 20K, I'm not gonna tell any, I'm not, I'm not gonna put that little end in where they say, where I say, help me get to 21K, help me get to 25K. I'm not doing that shit. Cause I feel like I feel like the haters, man, you know, they'll see that shit and they be like, oh, you almost there. I'm like to unsubscribe. You hear what I'm saying? Like, you know how haters be. You know what I'm saying? Oh, look at him, look at look at him getting on, man. I don't like that shit. You know what I mean? Uh let me try to knock them down. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not messing with that. And Cody X, do I play any games? Yeah, I play chess. I play pinochle. I play spades. I play poker. I play um, gin rummy. <laughs> I play a lot of shit, man. I play a lot of shit. Dominoes. What's happening? You know what I'm saying? Checkers. Jacks. Marbles. Pogs. <laughs> <laughs> no, but my favorite game though, I like I like playing chess. You know what I'm saying? I like I like playing chess. It's a mind game. You know what I'm saying? I definitely like playing chess. Yeah. But look, 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 man. We uh, we two hours in. We two hours in, and uh, I gotta get to dinner. Babe, is dinner ready? Yeah, but I need like 25 minutes. You need like 25 minutes. Okay, we got 25 more minutes, y'all. We got 25 more minutes. What about the console? No, I don't play. I don't play. I don't play video games on the console. Um, I used to play video games with my son, but yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't really play uh, video games like that. I don't have time. I don't have time. You know what I'm saying? Like, man, when I when, when my son was a, you know, when he was like a teenager, and he would come over and visit, we'd be on the game for a while. You know, Call of Duties, all that. But uh, yeah, I'm not. I'm not. Yeah, I can't sit there and be playing. I can't sit there and play no games now. I don't have no patience for it. Miami native, what's good? What's good, man? How you doing? You say, what's good? What's your thoughts on deep water haplochromous cichlids? Man, what the fuck are those? Man, I probably should know what this is. I probably should know what this is. Let's see. What's, what the, what's that? Yeah, hat. Let me, let me uh, see, man. Chromis. What are those? It's just haps, right? It's just haps. Uh, I think I got some haps, man. I like haps, man. I got, I got a couple of them, man. I got uh, well, I don't look like that though. I got, I got a couple of them, man. I got the, I got, I got this. I got that hat. I got two of those. You feel me? What else I got? Yeah, I got some haps. I like haps. I don't think I'll be able to have a whole hap tank, though, a whole hap species tank, but I do like the haps. Honestly, I'm feeling my peacocks. I'm feeling my peacocks, the Lake Malawis. I'm feeling my peacocks right now. Man, you know what I'm saying? My, my eye biter is super raw. My Lake Malawi barracuda is super raw. But there are like some haps that I feel like I would want to have. Like, let me show you. Like this one right there. You know what I'm saying? I would want that one. What else? What's another one? This one is kind of raw right there. You feel me? Like I would want, oh, there's like certain ones. There we go. Just got to find the right angle right there. So you already know. As soon as you see them, you already know exactly what they are. So some like that. I would want some of those. 
But yeah, man, I think I could throw them in there with the peacocks too, right? I think I could. Yeah, and like and subscribe, people. Okay. Jay Rivera, Jay Rivera say people don't like real, they want commercial type of videos, crazy edited, and etc. I appreciate your channel the most because it's real. I appreciate that, man. Thank you very much. Facts. You know, um, you know, when when I when I cut the camera off, man, you know, when I look myself in the mirror, you know, I gotta make sure that I'm cool with 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 with, with who's staring back at me. You get what I'm saying? You know, I, I'm I'm pretty sure I could get on here and try to find a way to make a video go viral or do some clown shit like that. You know, there's some clown shit that I could do to try to make my videos, you know, do better numbers and things like that. But again, when I'm done with the camera, when I'm done with the with the content, I got to look in the mirror and be okay with who's looking back at me. So um, there's a lot of things I just won't do. And, you know, it is what it is. You know, I'm going to provide you with the real. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to provide you with as real as I can be. You know what I'm saying? I'm about to give you the unscripted version you know what i'm saying and that's that's just that you know what i mean and whatever comes with it however it go i take that you know what i mean I'm, I'm gonna take that over me being fake as hell you know in front of the camera or doing something for views or doing something for likes i'm not i'm not with that then especially be talking about some of the content that i could do with the fish you know what i'm saying i'm not feeding my fish live fish for no certain videos i'm not gonna sit up there and and abuse my fish, you know, for certain for a certain amount of fucking views. I'm not I'm not doing that shit. I'm not doing it. It is what it is. And uh, you know, I got some real genuine people that's in here in the chat that's been conversating back, that's been supporting. You get what I'm saying? Like, I'm gonna take that. I take that over all that other shit any day. All right, where we at? Where we at? I love it. <laughs> Cody said, I love to get my hands on a pair of super red Severums. And we live in the sticks. And the closest store is an hour or two if we go to Nashville. So either way, it's going to cost us a lot. Can't find pairs easy. So is it possible to try to order some online, Cody? Is it possible to order some online? The Malawi Hawk? Let me look that up. Some of these are hard to get. Some of these are hard to get. So let me look up the Malawi Hawk. Already it's sounding like something that I want. Already. Let's see. Yeah. 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 Man, there's a couple of them I'm looking at, but yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, you know I want that. You know I want that one. Okay. Let's see if Imperial Tropicals, golly. So I, I mess with Imperial Tropicals. Like they're they're a reputable, they're a reputable site. Now I'm about to order this joint. I'm ordering this tonight. Right on. <laughs> yeah, Miami Native. I'm ordering this one tonight, man. $25. Two to three inches. I don't care if it's unsexed. Whatever. Damn, I wonder how much was the. Oh shit! All right, look. So if you, if I wanted a pair, the male and the female, five to seven inches, it's one hundred and fifty four bucks. Now, for twenty five dollars, I'm gonna take. I'm gonna take my chance for twenty five dollars. I'm gonna take my chance that I'm gonna that I'm gonna get a male. You know what I'm saying? I might even buy two just in case. But yeah, right on, right on. You on? Yeah, you just put me on. Any other any other Malawi um Malawi cichlids that I need to know about? Any other Malawi cichlids that I need to know about? All right, we need to get you out here to KY and take you catfishing, catch the biggest one you'll ever see. I'm not a I'm not a fan of fishing, Cody. I'm not a fan of fishing, man. I I, I don't I don't really like. I don't really like doing that for sport, man. Um, I used to fish when I was younger, but now that I have so many of these fish, like I feel like, you know, hooking a fish in the mouth, pulling it out the water, you know, for sport. But at least you keep it. You know what I'm saying? I just, I just, you know, I'll, I'll watch. Let me get that fish though. You know, I be telling my partners when they go fishing, I'm like, man, let me get one of those. I just be messing around. 
you know, like, but you know, like I see them catching sturgeon and shit like that. You know, I'm like, man, bring, let me get one of those when you catch them. But you know, they be eating them, so it's whatever. So I don't, I definitely don't appreciate that. As a BC, a person with integrity. That's why I rock with your channel, bro. I appreciate you, not uh, Miami native. I appreciate that, Mister Pooh. The aggression, aggressive like bite your finger aggression. But my boon is put in check. Okay, okay. I've only ordered two times online. Both did great, but I really love how Dan's fish pack the fish individually, but a quarium fish sale pack multiples of, uh, multiples together. Yeah, yeah. But like I said, I, I know from experience, I bought both my dovi from um. Uh, I bought both of my dovi from uh. Imperial Tropicals, you know, they were, they were, they were solid. They were solid. Like I said, I, I definitely trust them. Let's see what we got. Cody, I'm very particular ordering. Takes a, takes me a week or three weeks sometimes. Yeah, I understand that. Be easy at Quikes. I want a blue line grouper. They should be easy to get. And they're cheap. They are cheap, man. I see them all the time here. I see them all the time here. You know the grouper I'm about to probably get. The group I'm probably about to get. I might throw them in the one that 125. You know that 125 is going to upgrade to that 225. When I build that the new tank for the uh, for the big predators, I'm gonna throw. I'm gonna move that 225 over to where the 125 is. That 125 is gonna turn into a sump, maybe. Because that's a nice size tank. Maybe I might build a sump instead, so I don't have to waste a 125 gallon aquarium. But it's gonna turn into a 225, nonetheless. I'm thinking about getting that clown grouper. Do y'all know what the clown grouper look like? That is an exotic fucking grouper. Let me show you what the clown grouper look like, y'all. This is really an amazing looking grouper. And if y'all could find one of those, you might want to go ahead and snatch him up. Look at that. Look at that shit. Look at that that's crazy looking grouper, right? Don't even look like the typical grouper. So that right there, let me even look at that one. That one is, look at that, clown grouper. So that's a sick looking grouper. And the one that I seen, that was about $130, $129.99. Definitely a nice looking grouper. So I didn't want to get it, but they don't get that. Let me see the size of that. Let me see. Hold on. Let me see if uh see it only get 13 inches. Now, some of y'all might think that's a big fish. That's not a big grouper. It only gets about 13 inches. Damn. I should have bought it. I should have bought it when I seen it. It was at the local fish store for a while. They might still be there though. Yeah, yeah. I'm I think I think I'm gonna get that one. Yep, yep. Corey, we'll see. I finish. I fished all my life, so I guess I'm numb to the fact. But I've also heard that fish don't have nerves in their mouth tip. But who knows for sure, <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, uh, if you in the sticks, I definitely get why you could. You know, why you go fishing and all that. You know, it's especially if you catching and releasing. I mean, if you're gonna do it, if you're gonna do it, that's the best way to do it. Or if you were doing it to eat. But I just, yeah, it's just something. It's just something about when I see people go and grab, you know, fucking 12 to 20 of these fish, you know what I'm saying? And then they start trying to just give it away or whatever. You know what I mean? Like, you know, you kind of like depleting the population. And you kind of depleting the population. Dan's fish is heat. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not familiar with Dan's fish. If we own our house, I'd have the whole yard full of ponds like how they do in Florida with the coffins, <laughs> but plywood and the in-ground just breed tons of summer and pull them out in the winter. Yeah, if I was in Florida, man, if I was in Florida, I would not only have the big, super big three, 4,000 gallon pools outside. I would probably do the kiddie pools. I'm not going to lie to you. I'd probably do the kiddie pools three to 4,000 gallons. And then I would make sure that I also have me some Caymans. Like I would love to own a Cayman. 
You know, not the big Caymans, you know, the dwarf Caymans. Y'all know, y'all know, the, y'all, y'all watching either uh, Florida dudes? They got like dwarf Caymans, man. The dwarf Caymans are probably only going to grow like to four foot, something like that. Let's see. Let's see. Dwarf Cayman size. Five foot. Still big. But, man, I would love to have a Cayman. So yeah, and that's that's talking about the tail and all. That's not just the that's not just the head. But yeah, man, they look look at that. Yeah, the, the teeth looks crazy. But yeah, I would love to have like a dwarf caiman. Here we're gonna we have dwarf raccoons and shit. All right. Uh-huh. Get you a gopher cat for the channel. Cody, I don't like the gopher cats. I don't like I don't like the gopher cats. Not even a little bit. I see them and I just pass them right up. Just ugly little ass fish that just eat everything. And I hate the way they eat. You know what I'm saying? They eat so much straight gluttons. You know, they eat so much and then they all clumsy with the nah. Yeah. I'm, I I never get a gopher. Fish and wildlife regulations suck ass though, for real. Yeah. Uh-huh, for the regulations. You know, uh, yeah, they I, I, they probably been getting more strict lately. That's why predatory fans moved out of um, Florida and moved up to um, New York was because of the regulations, how they changed the laws out there. I think you got to have a permit for arapaima. You can't have an arowana. And a lot of the fish they sold, they were no longer able to actually keep there to sell. So that's why they got up out of there. Yeah, yeah, Cam, uh, Cannon, Camp Cannon, yeah, Camp Cannon is a. Uh, I used to, I used to watch Camp Cannon all the time. Yeah, yeah, he got some nice dwarf caimans. He got um, the, the the two big um, alligators that he, that they that he got from what was his name? The old man that died. But yeah, so now he got Snagatooth and whatever the um the female caiman was. But yeah, yeah. Hey, see, am I into muscle cars? Yeah, actually, I you know I don't have one right now, but um, somebody stole my shit a few years ago. I had a um a SS Camaro, an orange one, but uh, yeah, I want an old school. I want an old school six nine Merrill. Uh, also, I also like the the seventy two Boattail Rivieras. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, the dwarf caimans are sick. But y'all, it's about time for me to get up off this thing. We we two hours in. I honestly thought that I was going to be in here for an hour, but that's how I go when we get to talking and interacting and all that. Man, the time just flies. I appreciate everybody that has been on here um, chilling with me, hitting that like button, supporting. You know what I'm saying? Like, I really lose track when we get on here and start talking. So I appreciate all of y'all, and I'm about to catch y'all in the next one. Y'all have a good night. Peace.